Hi, everybody. It's Deborah from PeopleLovingAnimals.com. Thanks so much for tuning in and watching my video today. Um, today's video is going to be called, When Is It Too Cold for Dogs? Now, those of you that are subscribers, you'll know that this is kind of part two to the video I did last week. Uh, last week, I did a video called Cold Weather Safety for Pets. And I told you that, uh, that this week I was going to be doing this video, which is kind of just kind of a part two to that. So if you didn't already watch the the, the video about cold weather safety pits uh, tips for pets. I'm going to put a link to that in the description box of this video so you can go ahead and watch that one when you're done watching this one. Um, also, I want to let you know in case you're new here, uh, this is my website, peoplelovinganimals.com. Uh, I write dozens of articles and blog posts about all about the, um, the training health uh, and care of dogs and cats. And I also started this YouTube channel fairly recently where I'm now doing videos. So I'll, I would love it if you would subscribe to the YouTube channel and visit the website, peoplelovinganimals.com. Now, this is where we are right now. And we're using this article, uh, Can Dogs Stand Cold Weather? When Is It Too Cold for Dogs? Now, I'm not going to read you this article. I'm just using this article kind of as the guideline for today's video so that we can go over the points and so that I don't forget anything. Uh, in the description box of this video, I'm going to give you the link to this article. So you're going to be able to go here. You're going to be able to read the whole article if you want. You're going to be able to click on the links in it. Okay. And like I said, I'm also going to give you the link in the description box to the video I did last week. Kind of goes along with this same subject. Now, I live in Western New York. I live in the Buffalo area. So I do know what cold is. And um, I do know that winter can be very dangerous, not only here, but in other parts of the country and other parts of the world, not only because of, um, you know, like snow and ice make the roads hazardous, but because the temperature gets so cold that people and animals can and do actually die. Okay, so it's a very serious issue. It's not just about being cold and uncomfortable, at least in my part of the country. It's it can be life or death. And and believe me, I'm not being over dramatic. Uh, unfortunately dogs and cats freeze to death in this area in other areas of the country every year so I'm just trying to get the word out of things you can do um, things that pet owners can do to help prevent um, not only the death of an animal but just the animal being uncomfortable who wants to be cold right so what's the guidelines when is it too cold for dogs and a lot of this also obviously applies to cats too. any pet really uh, and kids <laughs> and us right? Um, playing in the snow with your dog. Um, these are two huskies that belong to my girlfriend, Kathy. They're so beautiful. She gave me permission to use their picture for my website. Now, lots of dogs absolutely love playing in the snow. Um, I personally had a poodle named Peppy when I was a kid, and he would love to go out in the snow and put his little nose down and run, and he was just like a little snow plow through the snow, and he loved it. But the thing is, is he had some fur. You know, he had curly uh, poodle fur, and he was okay being out in the cold for a little bit and playing in the snow. But when he was cold, he was cold. And he needed to be brought in when he got too cold. And that's what today's video is going to be about. Um, a dog that gets too cold, they can develop hypothermia. Uh, that's when their body temperature falls below normal. If their body temperature continues to fall, their muscles will stiffen, their breathing and heart rate will slow, and they could actually die. Uh, frostbite is also a very real possibility uh, for dogs and cats. Their ears, the tips of their ears especially, their tails and their paws, and also their noses um, can very easily get frostbite. It's a really... Um, it's a really serious issue, and that's one of the one of the main reasons that you should be watching out for your dog or cat um, when the temperatures are cold. Uh, there's no absolute number. It's not like a certain degrees um, of when is too cold for your animal. Um, things like wind chills can make the air feel colder than the thermometer reads. Um, there's things like freezing rain, ice, sleep that bring other dangers into the picture. So it's really all about good sense. It's really all about common sense, and I always say when in doubt, don't. Um, you know, if you think your dog's too cold to be left outside, don't leave them outside. If you think it's too cold to take your dog for a walk, don't. Okay. And always err on the side of caution. Okay. Always err on the side of caution when you're trying to make a decision about your pets in the cold weather. 
Uh, which breeds are, are most vulnerable? Um, some dogs are bred to live in co colder climates, like a like a husky, for example. They've got the thick wor uh, full fur coat. But just be aware, for example, a husky who lives in Florida, he's not going to be as able to put up with frigid temperatures if he's up here in Buffalo. Do you see what I mean? Because if they live in Florida, their body's going to adjust, their fur is going to shed, their blood is going to thin. Do you know what I mean? So just use common sense. Where does your dog live? What's their normal amount of time for being outside? If a dog is rarely outside, you wouldn't want to all of a sudden put them outside a lot. You know, just using common sense. Now, as a general rule, um, dogs with short fur will not cope as well in frigid temperatures as dogs with a full coat of fur like a husky. But please keep in mind, a husky is not a grizzly bear, okay? They're not a grizzly bear. They're still a dog, and even a grizzly bear will get too cold. A, a dog or a cat is a warm-blooded mammal, okay? They're, they're not built to live in frigid temp temperatures for hours at a time. Even a dog with a fur coat, you know, picture yourself. If it was, say, you know, 22 degrees and snowing outside, and I asked you to go stand on the front porch, and you said, no, I'll freeze my ass off. And I say, well, here's a fur coat, and I give you a fur coat to put on. Are you okay with standing out on that porch in 22 degree temperatures? No. The fur coat is not the end-all be-all that this dog is now invincible. Please keep in mind, they're a warm-blooded mammal. They will get too cold after a certain period of time and when temperatures are particularly frigid, okay? So just try to just keep that in mind. And again, always err on the side of caution. Uh, smaller breeds with short legs who have to wade through the snow or their bellies are getting wet on the ground, they're obviously going to get more cold because they're actually getting wet. Um, puppies can be more vulnerable, older dogs especially. You know, they've got some arthritis going on. Their bodies just don't work as well. Their heart doesn't work as well. They can't get warm. They can't stay warm. Always pay special attention in the cold to an elderly dog or cat. Um, dogs or cats who are ill, um, you know, they're, they're going to be more vulnerable to cold. And just like people, some dogs just get cold more easily. Have you ever lived with somebody that walks around bundled like an Eskimo and you're like in shorts and a tank top going, what the hell? You know, dogs are the same. You know, some dogs and cats get cold easier, you know, than other ones. So what we need to do is, you know, we need to really just pay attention and we need to know what the signs are that our, that our pet is getting too cold. Um, you need to know uh, your dog's limits uh, when it comes to the cold. Um, you should be visiting your veterinarian uh, regularly. Healthy dogs are more capable of handling the cold weather. Dogs that have developed things like kidney disease or heart disease or diabetes, they're going to be less able to maintain their body temperature. So knowing your dog's health status is crucial for you to be able to know what your dog's limits are going to be for the cold. And cats as well. There is an article um, that you can click here, help with vet bills and it's just an article that helps people if uh you want to take your animal to the vet and you can't afford it it's just uh, as an aside just a helpful thing better safe than sorry look at this cute picture this is my little wiener dog taz she's the cutest little munchkin unfortunately i lost her back in 2016 but you'll see her all over my website she was my pride and joy i loved her so much she was the second wiener dog i had i i really like the wiener dogs anyway here she is on a cold winter day here she is in her blankie she had her little tennis ball over here you see a little raw head chewy that's disgusting but this is her all bundled up and I say, you know, um, better safe than sorry. Go outside with her, you know, let her do her business, then get her inside with a blanket. Don't leave them outside. Err on the side of caution. You know, if it's in the middle of winter and you're a dog, wouldn't you rather be in this situation all tucked in inside with a warm blankie with your owner who you love? Or would you rather be standing outside freezing your ass off? <laughs> do you know what I mean? Let them be out there while they're comfortable, but then bring them back in. You know, be better safe than sorry. Uh, dogs who live outside, I'm going to try not to be bitchy during this part of the article or during this part of the video, but it really, um, it really upsets me. I personally don't agree with dogs living in dog houses. I, I just don't agree with it. Um, I think that if if you don't want your dog to live in the house with you and your family, then you shouldn't have a dog. I think dogs are pack animals. They want to live with and among others. They're very loving. They're very affectionate. Um, they don't 
they aren't of the mindset primally, uh, you know, on the primal level um, to be isolated and to be alone. Um, I also think that sometimes, I think a lot of times dog and dogs end up in the dog house because somebody got a puppy and they thought that was going to be real great, but then they didn't know how to train the puppy. So they ended up with the dog being a pain in the ass. And so they don't, they feel too guilty to get rid of the dog or else they can't get rid of the dog. And so they put the dog in a dog house and that's where they stay. Well, in this article, I'm going to give you this link and I'll give you the link in the description box too, for the online dog trainer. It's a online dog training site for um, $1. You you can have access to more than 250 dog training videos for three whole days. So I'm giving you that as a resource. If your dog's in the dog house because you can't get him to stop barking or you can't potty train him or, or whatever it is, if he's chewing up your furniture, whatever wound your dog up out in the dog house, if it was a training issue, please go to the link I'm giving you. Spend the dollar, spend three days on the website and look at as many videos as you can. It's an actual professional dog trainer teaching people step-by-step -step how to train their dog. Um, I, I really think that that's a lot of the reason that dogs end up in a dog house is because people didn't know how to train them. So I'm, I'm offering this as a solution. Um, I also think that, you know, unfortunately, um, uh, you know, dogs that are in a dog house, and again, I'm, I'm not, guessing. I'm basing this off my own personal experiences. I've lived in neighborhoods where there's dogs living in a dog house next door. Uh, one of my family members had a dog living in a dog house who literally froze to death. It was a Doberman Pinscher. She was living in a dog house. She literally froze to death. So I'm not making this stuff up. Okay. Now what I have witnessed in my own life is for example, dogs being tied up on a chain out in their dog house. They're rarely taken off the chain. They rarely are pulled out of the out of the yard and actually taken somewhere for a ride or a walk. I've seen numerous occasions where a dog is left out in really super hot temperatures with not a drop of water. Their, their dog dish dried up the day before or two days before the dog is literally out there with no water. I think most dog houses are not well insulated against the cold or the heat. Um, and I've also seen dogs in the winter time where there's a bowl of water out there for them, but it's frozen solid. Okay, what good is that? Can you drink an ice cube? Do you know what I mean? Um, so I really, I, I just personally, I've had enough bad experiences and I've witnessed enough bad things that I don't agree with dogs living in a dog house. And even if you're giving them ideal conditions out there, even if their dog house is insulated and all this kind of stuff, again, dogs are pack animals. They belong in the house with their pack, their people, their family, you. I just, I really feel strongly about that, but um, it's one of the things that you, you do need to be aware of in frigid temperatures that even with a dog house, uh, number one, you got to make sure that the, the water bowl isn't um, frozen. You've got to make sure that they're, they're warm enough in the dog house. And the other thing too, is if the temperatures are so frigid that they have to be inside the dog house in order to stay warm, what's a dog house three feet by four feet? Would you want to spend say three months inside a three by four space where you run outside to go poop and pee real quick and then have to run back in? Would you want to spend uh, even a week let alone a whole winter where you have to stay inside this doghouse. Otherwise you're going to be freezing. You really have to think of it from a realistic point of view. And um, so just keep it in mind. Again, they're not grizzly bears. Um, they, there are frigid temperatures. There's, um, you know, there's health issues, there's frostbite, there's all kinds of things. Uh, and again, uh, you're not going to change my mind. I don't agree with dogs that are put outside to live in dog houses. I, I think it's cruelty. I really do. I don't agree with it. Let's move on. Uh, walking your dog in the winter. Um, if your dog likes to go for walks in the cold weather, that's fine. But just realize, especially if they have short hair, they are going to need a coat. This is my little Taz. This is a little coat that I had for her. And if you watched my video last week, um, you'll remember that I told you about this little coat. It's a regular winter coat material. So it's like that vinyl plasticky kind of thing that helps her stay dry. And this little dog, because her little legs are only three inches long, she was very close to the ground. So her belly would get wet with snow and ice. So I actually purchased onesies, um, you know, for babies, the little t-shirts. And I put a little onesie on underneath this little coat. And it just helped to provide a little bit more warmth for her. So I would put this on. The hood protects her ears. 
But keep in mind, her little feet are still exposed. Her little nose is still exposed. You know, this is a little dachshund with short hair. So even with the coat, I can take her out for a walk, but then she needs to come back in, okay, because she's just not going to be warm enough. Um, as far as um, pads, you know, your dog's cat pads can be vulnerable, their little feet for frostbite. And also a lot of the salt that's used, like for roads, when they plow and salt the roads, and even the salt that people use on their sidewalks can um, be corrosive to your pet's um, feet. And so uh, just keep that in mind. You can purchase a, a product um, called, I think it's called Safe Paw um, on Amazon that, um, and as a matter of fact, I think I'll put the link, I'll put the link uh, for that in the description box for you. It's the salt for your sidewalks that's safe for your pet's paws. So I'll put a link to that. But even if you're using that around your house still, the salt that they use on the roads is extremely corrosive to skin. Um, and not only that, don't let them lick that off their paws because the chemicals in some of those can be toxic and make your animals sick. So just keep that in mind if they're getting salt on their paws. But also obviously just frostbite if it's cold and their little feet are wet and walking in the snow. Um, ideally, if you can get your dog to wear boots, um, that would be you know, obviously the ideal thing, most dogs unfortunately will, will not wear boots, but if you can get them to, that's the greatest. The other idea is when they come in from outside, wipe their paws with a warm washcloth or a baby wipe to get the salt off. You can also uh, buy coats. I give you a couple links here to Walmart and on eBay. You can buy inexpensive boots and coats for dogs. And um, I'm also going to give you the link to that um, that salt that is safe for them. But again, uh, paws, they're just like our fingers. They're very, very um, susceptible to frostbite, okay, as are their ears, their tails, and their noses. Now, watch for signs that your dog is getting cold. These are some of the um, most obvious signs, but maybe not so obvious. So let's go through the list. Shivering, obviously, that's an obvious sign that they're cold if they're actually shivering. If they stop moving, if your dog stops walking or playing, he may be too cold and you should take him back inside. If they're barking or whining, if your dog starts whining or barking, especially while they're looking right at you, he's probably trying to tell you something. He's trying to tell you he's had enough. If they're holding up a paw, that's like, you know, when your fingers get too cold, they hurt. It's the same thing with paw. If they're holding up a paw, their paws are too cold and you need to get them inside. If they're getting anxious, um, if your dog is beginning to show anxiety or fear, like trying to climb up your leg or trying to get you to pick them up, or if they're trying to like get your attention and lead you back to the house or lead you back to the door, that's another sign that your dog is getting too cold. Also, if they're looking for an escape or a safe place, some dogs will begin looking around frantically if they're freezing, trying to find a place that's gonna provide shelter. So if they're like looking around, looking around, they might be trying to find a way to get someplace that's warm. Okay, so that's another sign that it's too cold for them. Uh, we're coming to the end of the article. Uh, winter can be really fun for, for your dogs. Um, I've had lots of fun with dogs out in the snow and out in the cold and for walks and everything. And it's fun to put their little coats on and take them outside and everything. But you really have to pay attention. You really have to know what your dog or cat's limits are for cold. And uh, you really have to know the signs. And also keep in mind as your pet gets older, their needs are going to change. And the older they get, the less uh, able they're going to be to tolerate the cold. So I hope that this has helped you. A couple of things before we go. I do donate to animal charities. I do sell and promote certain products and services on this website. Any of the links that I give you, like for example, to buy something on Amazon or to buy a coat for your dog on eBay, the dog training website, any links that I give you in my videos or in my articles are um, affiliate links. And so I get a commission if you purchase things from these links. And that's how I'm able to do this website, peoplelovinganimals.com for a living, is I make an income via the um, sales for the companies that I'm an affiliate for. And also what I do is I donate 10% of all the commissions that I earn on this YouTube channel and also the peoplelovinganimals.com website. 10% of all my commissions get donated to animal charities. 
and I'm giving you the link here for a list of those animal charities. And also, if you just go to the homepage of my website, peoplelovinganimals.com, you'll see a list of the um, animal charities that I donate to. So if you are going to purchase something for you, pe your pet, there's a link here to Amazon. Use some of the links in my um, video or in my article. Um, if you're going to purchase something for your pet, I would love it if you would go through my links because you might as well have a portion of it go to animal charities if you're going to spend money on your pet, right? Because it'll help um, whatever you're buying helps your pet, but the 10% of the commission that I give to animal charities will then go on to help other animals. Um, also, for this reason, I would um, appreciate it so much if you would share this video, share my website um, on your Facebook page, on your Instagram, on your Pinterest, on your social media um, with other people who love animals because, number one, there's so many solutions to um, pet problems on this website and on this YouTube channel that somebody could find a solution to a problem they're having with their pet. And also, like I say, any of the purchases, 10% of the commissions go to help animals. So I really would appreciate it uh, if you would um, share this information with other people. Okay, so in the description box of this video, I'm going to give you the link to this article that we've used for today's video. I'm going to give you a link to last week's video that was also about um, pet safety in the cold um, for, for animals. I'm also going to give you, I'm going to give you that link to the dog training website. I'm also going to give you the link to buy the salt that is safe for your uh, pet's paws in the winter. And I'm also going to give you a free gift. At any of the videos that you watch, I always offer a free gift because I so appreciate people um, tuning in and watching my videos. So if you go into the description box, you're going to see a sentence that says, "Grab, you know, click here to grab my free gift. The free gift for this video is a free dog training manual. And it's by that same dog trainer that I told you about that has the video dog training website. His name is Doggy Dan. And it's a really good um, dog training manual. It's a PDF. Um, it's pretty thorough. So if you click on that link, it'll ask for your email and I will email you that free um, dog training manual. And also when you do that, you're subscribing to my dog lovers email list. And uh, so that means that every five or seven days, you're going to get an email from peoplelovinganimals.com and it'll either be an article or a blog post or a video all about dogs. So I would love to have you on board as an email subscriber. I would love it if you would subscribe to this YouTube channel. Uh, please give this video a like if it, it was helpful to you at all. It helps YouTubers a lot when you hit that little thumbs up and you give them a like. So not only for me, but any video that you're watching on YouTube, if the person has provided value for you and you got something out of it, please do them a favor and give them the little thumbs up like because it really does help them. It helps bit, um, YouTube to know that somebody liked their video and so it makes makes YouTube show our videos to more people. Uh, and I'm particularly passionate about asking you for that kind of help for my website because it really does help animals. And the more people see my content, the more animals are helped, um, not only by the donations that I make via the commissions that I earn, but also because these are the kind of articles I write, things to do, everything from, you know, how cold is too cold for dogs in winter to how to get your cat to use the litter box, what to do if your cat suddenly stops doing the litter box, um, help for dealing with an aggressive dog, um, help for dogs with separation anxiety, how to keep your cats from fighting. I mean, the list goes on and on and on. So I'm really passionate about asking you to please share the information because there's just so much help available um, on my website and on my YouTube channel for dogs and cats and their owners. So I would love it if you would comment below. Please let me know what you think. Please let me know what kind of dog do you have? What's their name? What's their breed? And also at the bottom of any video of mine and also in you can reply to any email of mine, I'm always um, looking for feedback and I'm always looking for new ideas of topics to cover. So if you're having a particular problem or issue with your dog or cat that you would like some help with, um, let me know because I may have already done a video or an article that would help you that I could provide for you um, or I could do one for you. I could research it and write an article and do a video uh, on the topic that you need help with. So I'm happy to help. Please feel free to reach out, reach out to me at any time. I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope you'll subscribe. I hope you'll visit my website and I hope, I'll, I hope that you will share it with uh, your friends who love dogs and cats. Again, my name is Deborah and my website is peoplelovinganimals.com. Thanks so much. Bye-bye.